think in order that I can at least complete a coherent thought on the subject. You don't have to write a song that's just reiterating scripture. You know, I get it. Like, you don't want to be so on the nose that you're just like a movie on pure flicks or something. And the woke culture, they're they're just as bad with their ideology. to, And they're getting to that degree where the, the woke crowd is like the Christians in the 90s, where they just have these really cringy, you know, versions of media, um, movies and songs and, and television shows and they have their 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 culture and it's super cringy because they're trying to teach you and they're trying to educate you in a way that nobody asked for. And so nobody asked for this, but they're going to they're going to like shovel it down your throat. And that's exactly what the Christians did back in the 90s when we were like burning Marilyn Manson books and stuff. And we were trying to get the youth, um, you know, excited about things. But people weren't. They were actually they were uh, they were creating some sort of culture. I don't think it was something that was um, competitive with what was going on around the around them in the world. But we did have like what what did they call it like radical youth culture youth something like that. And there's this like very unique time in like the late '90s, uh, early 2000s where there was a lot of Christian media for like teenagers and stuff, and they were basically like Christian Bart Simpson everything. Where people were like, you know, it was just like skateboarding and all of this, like the Burger King Kids Club type stuff, like all of, but all of, at the same time, all of culture was like that. All of the middle school, you know, young teenage culture was like that. So the church wasn't necessarily unique in that respect. And that's what I'm getting at is like, there's things that we can enjoy in the world. We can be in the world without being of the world. I like Spider-Man. I like Batman. I have a Voltron coffee mug over here. I have, I don't know if you can see it. I got a Legend of Zelda um, uh, coffee mug that looks like the original gold um, Nintendo tape. Uh, you know, I like stuff like that. And I'm trying to look around my room and see if there's anything else in here. Um, I've got a statue of Abraham Lincoln. Uh, I've got some really gothic artwork hanging up on the wall that you probably sh don't need to see. I've got some Pokemon, like a giant Pokemon card up here for, I don't know, know why that's up there. Uh, you know, we, we, we have things in the culture that we are fond of and that we enjoy. And yet we're not trying to create media that says like, here's how the Bible ties into Spider-Man because that's retarded. It doesn't. You can enjoy things without being so on the nose that you're cringy. And I think that's where a lot of Christian musicians get lost, they, especially the Christian rappers. They say they don't want to be Christian rappers because they think that you have to be cringy and on the nose or that you have to be. This used to be an actual excuse. They used to say, well, you shouldn't have to be a seminary student to be a Christian rapper. Yeah, yeah that's true. I'm, I was never a seminary student uh, formally. I'm, I'm largely self-educated and I sought out a lot of materials to help me understand the scripture so that I could at least have a conversation with a pastor, you know. I did something that I'm passionate about. But, so yeah, it's true. You don't have to be a seminary student. But when you remove all nuance from a conversation, you just, you end up with this bland, bird's eye view of, like, version of the subject that has no real meaning. So what you're saying is you don't want to be a Christian because you don't want to talk about things that Christians are supposed to talk about. If we remove the the nuance, right? Um, you don't want to scare people away with biblical language if we're more detailed about it. Like if we zoom in and we look at the like if we look at what's really going on, especially based on what you say, like either you don't know much about the scripture, and so how do you incorporate that into your songs because you just don't know a lot about it, or you don't want to scare people away. Because you want to be, and I think this gets to the root of it, Christian musicians, especially Christian rappers, you want to be accepted by the world that you're at war with. Um, the reality of Christianity that a lot of people don't understand is that we're in a spiritual war against the powers of darkness. And, and our mission is to draw people to Christ so that he can save their souls. But we can't go out there like, going hard against people we can't be going out there like 
making, you know, it, the people that are fighting on the side of darkness, they're at the mercy of the darkness. They're at the mercy of, of Satan and his forces. So they're not our enemy. They're the ones we're trying to save. But they're working against their own interests. And the only thing we can do is try to help them see and understand and and let God do the rest. You know, we don't change their minds, but we do shine a light and expose the darkness for what it is. Dude, that's hard. That's that's hard to, to, to wrap your head around. And when you are unequipped for that type of mission, you you end up being like, just just make me famous, dude. Just put a lot of money in my bank account and I'll do whatever and I'll change whatever I need to change. And I'll say whatever I need to say in order to be accepted by the world around me. Um, you know, like it's okay to smoke weed. Yeah, you know, like, I like weed. My flesh likes weed. My flesh likes uh getting drunk and and you know having sex. Like I hear these stories about these actual like established Christian artists like having sex parties and stuff. And it it makes me furious because there these are people that are displacing artists that could be spreading the gospel and that could be showing people what it means to be passionate about Christ, be passionate about God's word and Christian living. And I think that's a big part of it. You know, these guys don't want to live that way. Like people keep saying like, it's hard, you know, like if it's so hard to live for God, maybe you just don't love God. Like maybe that's what it is. If it is so hard to live for God, if it is so hard to align your life with in, in such a way that it reflects the glory of the God we're supposed to serve, then maybe it's because you just don't love Jesus. You know, like, and it would be better for you. It would be better for me, all of us, especially these fans that are trying to find Christ and you're standing in the way. It would be better if you just accepted that you don't love Jesus and that you just got out of the way. Or, or just scrub the Christian off of your name and just stop pretending to be one of us if you don't love Jesus. That would just be the best thing for all of us because then we wouldn't have to live this lie and then the Christians could actually support somebody who represents their interests and you can just go be another weed rapper. That's what you really want to do. It's 